So this is going to be a very quick talk about how to apply SEO to your academic journals. Now this is a very rough guide, it's a very quick guide, so the best thing to do is watch this. I'm going to explore about different ways of doing this because Google's always changing and it's always going to be updated, but it's a good starting point. So what we're going to look at is what is journal SEO, the benefits, how to apply it to your work, and then any additional things that you can do to help support it and help your work. SEO is short for Search Engine Optimization, and it is the process of improving the ranking of a web page or website in the searches and page results, which basically means when you go on Google and say, I'm looking for emotional response, it'll put something near the top. Um, without good SEO, you will be down on page three, four, five, or maybe 20. That's true for Google Scholar as much as Google Normal. And you know, as well as anyone else, that when you search for something, you might get page three, maybe, but you're generally looking at the first page, what looks good, you kind of hit those first few results, find something good and stop. It could be your work actually better than anything on that page, but without being at the front, it'll never get found. So, thinking about the benefits further, it's getting your paper higher in the search results. People don't look far. Doing it properly gets your research read, which is why you're doing it in the first place. It's getting your research cited, and it's allowing your research to have impact. Think about this. 30 odd years ago, before the internet was this massive thing, you would go, I'm researching uh, consumer behavior. You walk into the library, you look up the journal of consumer behavior, maybe get an index out, see what journal's there, and pick them that way. It was a very manual way. These days, almost no one does that. It's all online search engines. It doesn't matter which one you're using, they all have some form of SEO going on. So it's an absolutely crucial skill. Potentially, it's more important than the journal you're writing in, because if it's at their search results, you're going to read it first. And it's as an important skill as writing your journal well. So it's an integral part we shouldn't see as an extra, it's something we should all be doing as course. Now, to look at how this works, this is a page of Google Scholar I looked at earlier for emotional response. And you see that we've got um, these items ranked by citation, kind of. 163 citations, followed by 173, followed by 2,629. The paper with 163 citations will have better SEO. Maybe the authors didn't realize they were doing it, but it has better SEO. So this is an example of how great SEO can trump um, citations and highly influential work. So it's one thing to think about. So, how to apply it. Now, Wiley have an excellent guide to doing this, which I'm going to put in the link in this description, and even gives you a printing out sheet, which I've got here, and I use whenever I'm writing a journal. But to go over the um, basics of it, you have to use keywords. The keywords are the absolute driving force of SEO. These are phrases of two to four words that commonly appear together. So rather than just saying emotion, or emotions, you'd say emotional response. What you do is you would look at what keywords you're making for your main journal on the list, and you're going to work around that, so riffing off that. Um, but you want them to be closely as tight as possible. You don't have to use them religiously throughout the paper, you can do synonyms and variations of it, but you want to reduce synonyms. Um, so don't force keywords if it really doesn't work, but if you can use your keyword, over an alternative, use the keyword, because it's, if it's in there naturally, um, it'll really help boost the relevance. Google will look at your work and go, oh, this is really relevant to emotional response, let's put this higher up the ranking. Now, if you're cramming it in, as in just like putting it where it doesn't really fit, then Google can kind of work that out and go, well, you're just trying to get up here. Your content's probably not really that good. So we're gonna put you down the rankings and someone who doesn't have the sole cramming, their content's probably better, more naturalistic, probably more relevant and useful to you. You're going to enjoy it more. We'll put that near the front. So something to bear in mind when doing this. Another thing to bear in mind is actually selecting the keywords. Now, all of us are specialists in a certain area and 
you know, that you're going to know terms which I wouldn't even understand, but people in your field are actively looking for. So that's really good. A great example of this is pedagogic. You know, if you're not a teacher or a lecturer, you probably would never search for pedagogic. You would search for how to teach or teaching styles. Whereas if you're an academic, pedagogic is a great search term. So you're going to have your specific searches to use for. But one thing you can do to help find search terms which might help you, I've used in the past and has been successful, is Google AdWords keywords. Now there's a video tutorial here which I'm going to link in the description. Um, it's geared towards websites where are saying stuff, like make Google stuff, but it can also help you discover what's going on on the web with consumer behavior. So you go to the website, which the video tells you about, and I'm going to link again in the description, and you put in your search term, say, hey, I'm looking for emotional response and web design um, in the UK. Uh, you can do more variables, but we'll skip that for now. And you get this kind of result. Now, if you look at this, we, I've highlighted the areas where the competition is low, which means there's not much out there. So if I was to have responsive as my keyword, that's going to have um, less competition in the field than uh, responsive web. So I'm going to choose responsive because when there's less to fight, whereas you look at web design, that is really hard to get to the top rankings. It's incredibly difficult. So you got that. Now, the other thing you're looking at is the second column, which is the average monthly searches. So not only the top one not only has low competition, it's got 90,000 people per month searching for it. Now, what's really interesting here is that 90,000 people are searching for it and it's low competition, 4,000 people are searching for web design and it's high competition. So responsive is actually a really great word. It's going to be better for me than UI mobile or responsive site or mobile interface or UI patterns. So while I don't have to look at this and religiously follow it, I can go, you know what, these keywords are better than those keywords. So I'm going to choose responsive as one over something else. And it could be that I've gone in my paper, written about responsive um, sites. No, I can just go, hey, responsive, or mobile responsive, go, no, no, responsive. I can swap words out to really start honing in on these good keywords. Now, let's look at the actual paper and break it down to pieces. The title of your work is the most important thing, because obviously you search for a term, you read the title, you read all the titles, at least skim the titles. If your title sounds like it's relevant, then you'll go, ooh, I'll give this a read. So be explicit and use your keywords in there. It'll push this SEO and grab the reader. So always start the title of the keyword. That really helps. And you want to repeat this keyword in the abstract and the introduction. The rule of thumb is the first 55 words, because that's kind of where Google looks. When you're thinking about your title, you want to use an active voice. So um, think about paper that's written that I'd submitted. You could say, how to use the dress scale in mobile design, which is much better for SEO and actually user engagement than a study of dress scale and use. Both of them are acceptable, both of them work, both of them describe what I'm doing, but the first one actually works better. Moving on from this, in your abstract, you want to have three to five keywords and you want to repeat them two or three times as is natural. So again, you're not hammering them in, you're not going over the top, but you want to use them. Once again, don't overuse them. Also, remember that the abstract is one of the most used, sorry, most read sections in your entire paper. So having a great abstract with lots of keywords that's going to draw the user in, make them interested in saying, hey, this is what I'm looking for, it's a really great thing. The structure of your paper, again, that's very useful. It's the key, it's the headers and the way you break things out. You've got to try and have one or two keywords per heading. Now that's really not possible in a standard journal format with heading one, because you've got you no know, introduction, aims, literature review, uh, methodology, results, discussion, now, uh, those things. But in the subheadings, you can get more flexible. So you can say literature on responsive, literature on emotional design, whatever it is, and you get your keywords into those subheaders. 
Making subheaders clear will not only allow the user to read it better, but also when Google's scanning your work, go, oh, this is about this. I know it's about this. Let's search that section because the, ad, the crawlers are very sophisticated at Google and other search engines as well. It's not just Google, but I'm just using that as a catch-all for search engine. You can also think about um, breaking your sections into subheadings that you wouldn't normally do. So in your results section, you can say findings and then analysis rather than just results because that, again, helps the SEO, it helps the reader. Speaking of helping the reader, your images and figures are really useful because quite often when you're skimming through a paper, you'll see something interesting and go, ooh, what is this? Read the caption, oh, it's about that, I want to read more. You find it in the text and you go, okay, I'll read more. But from an SEA point of view, you want to have two to four keywords in each. Now, it's not difficult to get these in, but make sure you do it and make sure you use all your keywords throughout. Don't just pick two of your keywords and go, that's enough. Go, right, I'm going to distribute all my keywords through all the figures where appropriate. Descriptive titles really help, so this image is about this rather than just figure one uh, bar charts. You know, that doesn't really tell you anything, doesn't help Google. So try and help Google associate the captions with the images and get your SEO up there because Google will look around the images because that's where description tends to be. It's a good tip. The last section is other things you can do. So you've written your journal, you've added SEO throughout, you've really honed it, enhanced it, but that's not quite enough. You've also got to tell Google, hey, this thing is high quality. So putting your um, citation, putting your paper on your professional website, such as My Manchester, is a great option. If you've got research groups, get the paper on there. If you've got other um, personal websites, get it on there. Academic profiles, so LinkedIn, ResearchGate, Orchid, Mendeley, any you can name, get them on there. If you can get full text if possible, get them on there. Social media, right now is not currently used as much as it probably will be, but it's increasing year upon year, and in the future, will possibly even form part of the ref. So every time you publish a paper, you tweet it. Maybe even set half an hour each week in your calendar saying, hey, I'm going to search um, Twitter for the keywords relative to my research area. So it could be mobile design, consumer response, whatever it's going to be. And then if you have some tweets already made up in a Word document, you just copy and paste and retweet saying, hey, I've got a paper on this. I think you'd be interested. I've got a paper on that. This increases the number of references on Twitter, which in Ultrametrics, another form of seeing how you are and your impact, is increasing. But also, that person could pick it up, that person could read it, that person could cite it, and that will increase your SEO. So that's quite useful. Further to that, Wikipedia. It has a very bad rep of being a very, very unreliable source, but research has shown that pages with uh, multiple edits are increasingly more accurate than professional sources and that the more it's throughout, the more professional it is. You are an expert, you know your field possibly better than anyone else in the world. So you could see it as your responsibility to look at the pages which relate to your research area, read through it, and where your research adds information, write about it, and cite yourself with full academic citation. Get all your research on Wikipedia, because that, again, increases the links, increases the um, SEO, and Lots of people, definitely students and many academics as well, will go, oh look, I'm researching a new topic, I don't know anything about this, let's go on Wikipedia. What's that say? Oh, I found some information things, I'm going to read the journals now. And if your journal's there with full Harvard, they'll go, oh, this is probably good, they'll read it, possibly cite you, and it goes up. Also, Altmetrics look at some Wikipedia and says, how many times have you been cited there? It also looks at Mendeley, so definitely, if you're not using Mendeley, get Mendeley and put all your papers in the My Paper section. If you know of any blogs relating to your field or any academic magazines, email them say, hey, I found this, I've just published this paper, you might be interested in this. As well as that, there's university public relations. These guys are there to talk about your research. It doesn't matter if you think yours is really specialist or too pithy, 
just email them. Because when they're aware of the kind of things you can do, then the chance of you going on radio or TV or magazines or newspapers or any kind of media increases, increasing your um, status as an academic and also increasing the visibility of your research. So there's no reason not to do that. Finally, you can make a video presentation of your research. This is a video presentation. I've got a link on how to make a video presentation, which I'll again put in the description of this video. So doing that, put it on YouTube. There's also other sites such as Geoset, which I'll again link in the bottom. And you do that. People will search YouTube for your research area. They find your video, they watch it, there's a link at the bottom to your article, there's a link, there's a hard reference. It gets your ideas out there. There's quite a few um, theories, most notably um, Brian Fogg's Motivation Wave, which is very prominent in the design field for consumer behavior. He's not published that much on it. Um, he'd been writing a book for years, he just hasn't published it, which is quite annoying. He's one of the gurus in this area, and he uses YouTube to really get his ideas out there. Now, starting at the beginning, you're not going to have a great profile, but the more you do it, the more you get watched, the more you get subscribed, the better it is. There's no reason not to do that. And we've got the Fashion Works at Manchester University site uh, here at Manchester, where you can put um, your videos. That will actually increase the watching because it's a department channel. But if you've got your own channel like this one, do that. So that concludes my little talk about SEO, but before I go, I want to say that if you found this useful, then please subscribe to the channel, there'll be more content like this coming, and also like this video, is great, but more importantly, if you've got any questions about anything, please write them in the comments and I'll respond to them as fast as I can. So that's everything for now, so good luck with doing SEO on your journal article.